Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. My name is Connor Hookstra, and in today's video, we're going to be revisiting a video that we made five months ago called One Problem, Eight Programming Languages. And in today's video, we're going to be revisiting a couple of the solutions that we presented because we got suggestions slash alternative solutions, uh, both in the YouTube comments and on Twitter. Uh, so we'll revisit a couple of those. And then we're also going to uh, present four new solutions that were provided both on Twitter and in the YouTube comments. Um, and at the very end of all this, we're going to introduce a new APL solution, which I found in a 1979 paper, which I am super excited about. I haven't made this YouTube video yet, but I... I released a YouTube video a couple months ago where I show an APL solution and say it's the best. I was reading a 1979 paper by Ken Iverson where he has a solution to the same problem in half as many characters as I did. And it was a solution to like a leak code problem, which like I just think is hilarious because it basically says Ken Iverson was leak coding like four or five decades before it was even a thing. And he was doing it better than the people that are doing it today. So that clip was from a talk called Algorithms as a Tool of Thought that I gave recently at an APL conference. The link will be in the description down below if you'd like to go and watch the whole thing. I'm a huge APL fan, if you can't tell. But with all that said, let's hop into a very brief uh, summary of the problem description that we covered in the first video. Note, I would highly recommend if you haven't seen the first video, the link will be in the description. Go watch that one first, then come back and watch this one. So very briefly, we're going to be given a string which represents an expression that consists of left parentheses, right parentheses, and sort of numbers and arithmetic expressions. We want to figure out what the maximum depth of parentheses are. So the way we're typically approaching this is by filtering out everything that's not a left or right parentheses, then converting the left parentheses to ones and the right parentheses to negative ones, then doing a plus scan to get sort of the running sum of uh, left parentheses, and then getting the maximum from this, which is going to be three. So like I said, if you want a more in-depth explanation, check out the first video, or there will also be a link to the problem description, which you can carefully read through yourself. So the first solution that we're going to revisit is our Rust solution. So this was the solution that was originally presented trying to highlight our filter map scan and max algorithms. The number one comment that I got repeatedly was that for the Rust solution, I can omit the return and the semicolon for the last expression because that is always returned in a function in Rust. So that's pretty nice. And then on top of this, I got an explanation of why the sum exists in the scan because that was a comment I made in the first video. And John Warren says, iterators in Rust return either sum or none, with none being the terminator of the iteration. By explicitly returning the iterator values, Rust's scan gives you the option of terminating the iteration early. So this is interesting to know. Basically, a scan you can short circuit uh, based on the sum and none that you are getting. I think that this is an odd design. I personally would prefer to have two different algorithms, a scan that can short circuit, circuit or a scan that you know is just going to go from uh, left to right completely. And this is because in this case, we know that we want, need to do, we're, we're never going to short circuit here. And so it's adding extra noise to our algorithm that we're building up by having to sort of deal with the sum case. Um, it'd be nice, in my opinion, if you had two separate algorithms. But like I said, that's just my opinion. The next solution that we're going to visit is our Elixir solution. So this was the one that we presented in our previous video. And I got a comment on Twitter from someone who is very good at Elixir, Jose Valim. If you do not know, Jose Valim is the creator of the Elixir language. So super cool that he commented on Twitter his solution. If we make this look a little bit nicer, not in sort of the non-syntax highlighted Twitter form, uh, it looks like this. So basically, we're using two car list and then map with pattern matching. And then the rest is uh, basically the same, except there's a nicer way of defining that we're doing a plus scan. I did it a little bit more noisily with a couple extra ampersands, which are unnecessary. And a lot of folks commented in the YouTube comments that you don't actually need an explicit filter. You can fold the filter into your map by dealing with all three cases, left parentheses, right parentheses, and then everything else, which is what pattern matching is perfect for. So um, that's a great comment. And uh, Jose here is definitely taking advantage of that. So once again, thanks to Jose for tweeting this solution. And now we're going to move into our four new solutions, the first being F sharp. So this is our first F sharp solution, basically doing exactly what the Elixir solution from Jose that we just saw. It's mapping with pattern matching, dealing with the left parentheses, right parentheses, and then everything else, and then doing a plus scan and a max. Absolutely love that you can do a plus scan just with uh, specifying the plus here in F sharp. 
which you would expect for sort of more functional languages. So this was from Foggy Nights. Thanks for posting this. And we also have an alternative solution that's the same. It's just has a type signature and is slightly is formatted slightly differently. So here we have the type signature from string to int. And then we have all of the pattern matching on one line, which I actually prefer for this. But uh, everyone's going to have a different opinion on this because I just think it's a little bit more compact and more readable. Uh, for this solution. But like I said, depending on your style preferences, uh, you might prefer the first one. So thank you to this user whose name I definitely can't pronounce uh, for providing the alternate alternate formatting and the type signature solution. Moving on to our two Python solutions. This is our first Python solution. So we're basically making use of max, accumulate, and a gener generator expression, which is doing both our mapping from uh, the left parentheses and right parentheses to one and negative one, and uh, then doing the filtering in the if C is in the left paren, right paren. So this is uh, pretty nice as far as Python goes. Um, the one thing that I really, really don't like about this is the fact that uh, accumulate is our scan algorithm. So unfortunately, uh, Intertools, the library, has chosen to call their scan accumulate, which in many languages, including C++, is the name of the reduction algorithm. So very unfortunate that that happened. Also, there's a second solution provided, which is quote unquote more functional um, and it's designed to uh, be closer to the solutions that we presented in the first video. And so this one is replacing the generator expression with explicit calls to both filter and map. So these are both pretty nice. And thank you to YV Relna for providing both of these Python solutions. Moving on to our second last new solution, the Wolfram language solution. I don't know anything about the Wolfram language. Uh, this was provided by Merrick. And if we try to reason through about this, we can see sort of the pattern matching happening at the bottom with the left paren and the right paren. Then I assume the string case is characters is doing the filtering, and then everything else is doing the plus scan and the uh, maximum. So the max at fold list, I assume, is the max, and then somehow the plus inside these uh, brackets here is uh, equivalent to doing a plus scan. So pretty cool to see this language. Um, definitely in the future, I'll have to explore the Wolfram language because you can do some pretty nifty things that aren't possible in any other languages. And our last but not least new solution is the uh, Kotlin solution. And this looks very similar to a lot of the solutions we saw in our first video for explicit calls to filter map scan and max. Uh, pretty nice. The filter is using an it in a left paren, right paren string. And then the map is using a ternary expression, pretty nice. And then scan, unfortunately, we can't just specify the plus operator. We have to do uh, explicitly mention the accumulator and the current value variables. Uh, but other than that, super, super nice and very similar to uh, other solutions we saw in our first video. So thank you to Mohan for providing us with this Kotlin solution. And this brings us to our APL solution. So this is the APL solution that I provided in our first video. It's doing a filter, a map, a scan, and a max, although it looks slightly different. Once again, I do a full walkthrough of how to build up this expression in APL in the first video. Check that out if you haven't already. But there is a much nicer way to solve this problem in APL. So note APL stands for a programming language. It was invented in the 60s by an individual named Ken Iverson. And Ken Iverson wrote a paper in 1979 called Operators while he was at IBM. And if you flip to page five of this paper, it tells you exactly how to solve this in APL. So it says if we have an expression E, where E is a 14 element character vector, which may represent an X expression to be parsed. To determine the balancing of parentheses, we take the table, which is the outer product of left paren, right paren, with the expression whose first row identifies left parentheses and whose second line identifies the right parentheses. The expression uh, minus first axis reduce on the outer product then yields a vector with one for each left parentheses and negative one for each right. And then we can do a plus a reduce on that expression, which yields the overall balance of parentheses. So here it's showing you how to calculate what the outstanding balance of left parentheses is, which is going to give you one. But if you flip to a couple pages later, after he's done talking about the plus scan, it says the plus scan can also be substituted for the plus reduction in the parentheses balancing example given earlier to yield the depth in parentheses in every part of the expression E. So here it's showing you with the given expression, uh, we're going to end up with a plus scan of all the different depths. And in order to uh, use this to solve our problem, we just need to do a, a max reduction on this plus scan of the depths and we're good to go. So let's hop over to our ride editor and walk through what this paper just explained to us. 
So here we are in our ride editor and we have preloaded the expression that is used in the paper. And we can load this into E, so now E has this expression stored. And the first thing that Ken points out in the paper that we need to do is an outer product. So if we take the uh, left and right parentheses string and we use this as our left argument to an outer product using the equal binary operation with our expression E, Basically, for every element of the string on our left, we're going to do a equal with the string on the right. So this is going to give us a matrix that is two times the length of our expression E, where the first row is equal to uh, everywhere a left parenthesis shows up, and the second row is equal to everywhere a right parenthesis. And we can very easily see this uh, by just taking our expression and tabling it um, with uh, the original. So you can see here, Anywhere that a left parenthesis shows up, we have a one in the first row. And then anywhere a right parenthesis shows up, we have a one in the second row. And so once we have this, we can basically do a row wise subtraction. So we use the uh, first axis reduction with the minus operation to subtract the second row from the first row. And then this is going to give us our ones and negative ones that correspond to uh, our left parentheses and right parentheses. And once we do this, all we have to do is the plus scan that we did in our original solution, and then we do the uh, max reduction, and we're done. So we can put this all in a nice function called uh, max depth, replace the E with an omega, because that's our parameter name, and then we're good to go. So in a single screen here, we've built up this expression. APL is just absolutely beautiful. And if you count it out, this solution is roughly, I think, nine or 10 characters shorter than the original solution. It doesn't, com it doesn't use any forks or combinators. So in my opinion, it's much easier to reason about. And yes, APL is absolutely awesome. And as I said in the clip at the beginning of the video, super cool to see Ken Iverson out leak coding everyone 40 years ago. So to summarize, this is the APL solution I presented in the first video, and this is the APL solution that we can attain from using the expression in the 1979 paper by Ken Iverson called Operators. APL, absolutely beautiful. And that is all I'm going to cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you did, feel free to hit that like button and share it with a friend. And I hope you have a great day.